Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Sai Ramuch Dawa with the Midday News. The headlines Six out of seven accused convicted in rape and murder case of eight-year-old girl in Katwa district of Jammu and Kashmir. Actor and playwright Girish Karnad passes away in Bengaluru. North and central regions continue to be in the grip of heat wave. In ICC Cricket World Cup, South Africa to take on West Indies in Southampton. And in FIH Men's Hockey Final Series, India to face Uzbekistan in third and final group match in Bhuvneshwar. Pathan Court District and Sessions Court today convicted six people accused in the rape and murder of an eight-year-old nomadic girl in Katwa in Jammu and Kashmir. A seventh accused, Vishal, who is the son of main accused Sanji Ram, was acquitted. The quantum of punishment will be announced later today. The in-camera trial in the case that shook the nation ended on June the 3rd. Those convicted are Sanji Ram, the village head, his juvenile nephew, Anand Datta, and two special police officers, Deepa Khajuria and Surinder Verma. Also convicted are head constable Tilak Raj and sub-inspector Anand Datta, who allegedly took 4 lakh rupees from Sanji Ram and destroyed crucial evidence. More from our correspondent. The eight-year-old girl who was kidnapped on January 10 last year was raped in captivity in Rasana village in Kothua district after having been kept sedated for four days before she was strangulated to death. The day-to-day -day trial commenced in the first week of June last year at the district as sessions court in Pathan court in neighboring state of Punjab after the Supreme Court ordered that the case be shifted out of Jammu and Kashmir. Meanwhile, the situation in Rasana village of Kothua district is normal as authorities had made inappropriate security arrangements to deal with any landlord situation in the wake of the verdict. R.K. Rana, AR News, Jammu. Noted actor, dramatist and Gyanpeet awardee Girish Karnad passed away in Bengaluru this morning due to multi-organ failure. He was 81. Coming to fame as Kannada of playwright in the 1960s, he went on to become a critically acclaimed actor and filmmaker during the later years. Besides the Gyanpeet Award, Karnad was also conferred the Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan. Girish Karnad was an iconic figure who has to his credit some classic plays and cinema, starting from his acting and screenwriting debut in Samskara, based on the novel by U.R. Anant Murthy, to his acting in Malwudi Days and Tiger Jinda Hai. He had never failed to impress the discerning audience. The plays like Nagamandala, Yayati, Hayavadana, Tughlaq, and movies like Vamshavruksha, Tabbali Neenade Magane, Vandanandu Kaladalli, Kuempus, Kanuru Heggadati, and critically acclaimed award-winning movie Kadu, created a new benchmark in the world of art and cinema. The state government has announced three days mourning and one day holiday today as mark of respect to the noted writer. Chief Minister H.D. Swami has said that the mortal remains of Girish Karnad will be cremated with full state honours today. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. President Ramnath Govind, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javadekar expressed condolences over the passing away of the noticed, noted artist. In his tweet, the president said, With the passing away of Girish Karnad, cultural world has become poor today. Mr. Modi also said in a tweet, Girish Karnad will be remembered for his versatile acting across all mediums. The Prime Minister added, the artist also spoke passionately on causes dear to him. Mr. Javarikar also tweeted, he saddened by the passing away of Girish Karnad. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will meet the secretaries of central government in New Delhi today. During the meeting, Mr. Modi is likely to discuss the agenda of governance and seek their active involvement in the administration. Mr. Modi used to hold such meetings with top government officials in his first term as well. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has assured full support of the Centre to Andhra Pradesh for its development. Addressing a public meeting at Tirupati last evening, the Prime Minister said, Andhra Pradesh has infinite possibilities for growth and the centre and the state government must work together to take the state to newer heights. The Prime Minister also offered prayers at the famous hill shrine of Lord Venkateshwara in Tirupati. He reached Tirupati after concluding his two-nation visit to the Maldives and Sri Lanka. In a tweet, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar said, The visit demonstrated India's priority to the neighbourhood-first policy. 
West Bengal Governor K. N. Tripathi met Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. The meeting lasted more than 30 minutes. He briefed the Prime Minister about prevailing situation in the state. Earlier, the Governor met Home Minister Amit Shah and briefed him as well. The meeting comes in the backdrop of post-poll violence in Sandesh Kali area of North 24 Parganas, which saw the death of several people on Saturday evening. West Bengal Governor yesterday issued a statement expressing concern over the violence. The Home Ministry has also issued an advisory and expressed its deep concern. After the swearing-in of Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Vice Jagan Mohan Reddy's 25-member team on Saturday, the first cabinet meeting is going on at present. The meeting started in the morning, chaired by Chief Minister Reddy at the AP Secretariat Amravati, where the ministers are going to take key decisions. More from our correspondent. The implementation of Navaratnalu scheme is the main agenda of the meeting. The cabinet will discuss a total number of eight issues. The old age pension hike from rupees 2000 to rupees 2200. The Asha worker salary hike from the rupees 3000 to rupees 10,000. Issues of merge of APSRTC with the government. Salary hike of the municipal sanitation workers. 27% interim relief to the state government employees will also be discussed. Raitu Bandhu scheme, salary hike of home guards and termination of contributory pension scheme are also key issues of the day. Dr. G. Kondal Rao, AER News, Vijayawada. Former Civil Aviation Minister and Nationalist Congress Party leader Prafula Patel today appeared before the Enforcement Directorate. This was in connection with the money laundering probe related to losses suffered by Air India as part of an alleged multi crore aviation scam. Officials said Patel appeared before the agency this morning in New Delhi. His statement will be recorded under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act and he is expected to face a series of questions. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. North and central regions of the country continue to be in the grip of heat wave conditions. There has been no relief from heat wave in these regions even as the monsoon advanced in the southern state of Kerala yesterday. In Rajasthan, normal life is continuously getting disrupted due to intense heat. Most places in the state are witnessing temperatures around 45 degrees Celsius. There is also widespread impact of the scorching heat on animals and vegetation. According to information received from Met Department, Churu crossed 45 degrees Celsius temperature mark at half past 11 this morning. Taking heat wave into consideration, government has rescheduled the working hours of workers under Manarega from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. Leaves of all employees of Water Resource Department and Electricity Boards have been cancelled. At many places, water is being sprayed on roads to get some relief from heat waves. At the border areas in western Rajasthan, special arrangements have been made for BS Savans performing their duty with full alert under temperature near 50 degrees Celsius. Meteorological department has expressed hope that in next two or three days, cold winds from Arabian Sea will bring some relief and temperature will come down to some extent. Sudarshan Nahar, AIR News, Jaipur. In Uttar Pradesh as well, the severe heat wave continues without any respite. Yesterday, Banda was the hottest, sizzling at 48 degrees followed by Allahabad at 47.7 degrees Celsius. The Bundelkhand region is worst hit where temperatures are soaring. More from our Lucknow correspondent. Along with the state, the Bundelkhand region is witnessing most fury of temperature leaving people in trouble. The temperature in Jhansi, Urai and Hamirpur of this region has already crossed 45 degrees Celsius, which is around 4 degrees above the normal. The high temperatures have deepened the scarcity of water in this area. People are seen to beat the heat in their own ways. Crowd may be seen on the shops of mango, pana, lassi and cold drinks. MS Yadav, AIR News, Lucknow. Several parts of Madhya Pradesh are also reeling under severe heat wave. A report. The rain provided some relief from the heat, but uprooted trees and damaged electricity supply lines, adding to the summer's torture. Med department said that there is unlikely to be any respite from the searing heat for the next few days. Most parts of the state are reeling under 44 to 45 degree temperature, and there is extreme heat wave warning in many areas for today. The maximum 48 degree temperature was recorded in Khajuraho and Nagao yesterday. The state capital Bhopal sizzled at 45.7 degrees, and Gwalior at 47.3 degrees. Sanjeev Sharma, AIR News, Bhopal. The situation is no different in Himachal Pradesh. A report from Shimla. 
Along with northern states, the lower areas of Himachal Pradesh are also in grip of severe heat as well. To get respite from heat, tourists are reaching in large numbers in Shimla, Kufri, Manali, Dalhousie and Khajiar. Due to influx of vehicles, locals along with tourists have to face long queues of traffic jam situation. Meanwhile, the local Met Office has predicted thunderstorms with gusty winds along with rain in lower and middle hills over the next two days. Sanjeev Sundriyal, AIR News, Shimla. In Jharkhand, 11 convicts have been sentenced to life imprisonment in connection with a gang rape case. They have also been fined with 20,000 rupees each. Thus, a total fine of 2,97,000 rupees will be given to the victims of the gang rape case. The incident took place on 6 September 2017 at a lonely place in Diggi in Dumka district where a 19-year-old girl was held hostage and gang raped by the convicts. Two days later, 16 suspects were arrested and 11 of the 16 were convicted and sentenced after a speedy trial. In Jharkhand, the death toll has gone up to 11 in the road accident in which 24 persons were also injured. The road accident took place in the wee hours today around 3 a.m. at GT Road of Danua Ghati under Chauparan Police Station of Hazari Bagh District. The injured have been admitted to a hospital in Chauparan and some are being referred to other hospitals for treatment. The private bus involved in this accident was going from Ranchi to Gaya when it hit a trailer loaded with rods as the driver lost control. In Uttar Pradesh, four passengers were hit to death by a train in Itawa district today. More than six passengers were also injured in this fatal accident. The accident took place when the Bandra terminal bound Avad Express stopped at Balrai station. Passengers got down and were standing on track. Meanwhile, a speedy Rajdhani Express passing by hit the passengers, leaving four dead and more than six wounded. The injured have been admitted to hospitals at Sefai and Tundla. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has expressed deep sorrow on the death of passengers and instructed officials to provide better treatment to the injured. The Assam police has arrested five miscreants for their alleged involvement in forcing a cultural group to dance naked at Samaria area in Kamrup district. The incident occurred during the recent Eid celebrations. There were over 40 male and female dancers in the group and some miscreants forced female dancers to dance naked. However, the troop managed to escape from the spot with the help of police and people from neighboring areas. Official sources said that an FIR has been lodged and police are investigating the matter. The National Commission for Women has also taken up the matter so a motto. There was massive outrage against this crime and strict action was demanded against the culprits. In the ICC Cricket World Cup, South Africa will take on the West Indies in Southampton today. The match will begin at 3 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Chasing the victory target of 353 runs, Australia were all out for 316. India will next play New Zealand on Thursday in Nottingham. In the FIH men's final series being played in Bhuvaneshwar, the match between USA and Japan was drawn this morning. Both teams scored two goals each. Kenta Tanaka of Japan was declared man of the match. India will today look to seal a semi-final spot when they face Uzbekistan in their third and final group match at Bhuvaneshwar. South Africa will also face Mexico this evening. And Yuvraj Singh today announced retirement from international cricket, ending a roller coaster career during which he became the hero of India's 2011 World Cup triumph and fought a gritty battle with cancer. The 37-year-old cricketer announced his decision in Mumbai. Yuvraj played 40 tests, 304 ODIs and 58 T20Is for India. He put together 1,900 runs in the longest format and 8,701 in the one-day the format in which he enjoyed most success. Lewis Hamilton secured a record-breaking seventh win at the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix yesterday after Sebastian Vettel was penalized for dangerous driving. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Six out of seven accused convicted in rape and murder case of eight-year-old girl in Katwa district of Jammu and Kashmir. Actor and playwright Girish Karnat passes away in Bengaluru. North and central regions continue to be in the grip of heat wave. In ICC Cricket World Cup, South Africa to take on West Indies in Southampton. And in FIH Men's Hockey Final Series, India to face Uzbekistan in third and final group match in Bhuvaneshwar. And with that, we end the midday news. <laughs> 